like a word from my IT folks when you're ready. I'd like to call to order the October 6, 2008 meeting of the East Ascension Consolidated Gravity Drainage District. Roll call, Madam Secretary. Please note that uh, Chris Lohr is absent and Pat Bell. I'd like to ask everyone to stand. Uh, we'll have the invocation by George Valentine. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day, Father. We ask you the blessings on this meeting tonight. Father, as we stop and reflect, Lord, we just thank you for the freedom that we enjoy in this country, that no one take it uh, for granted, Father, as we have went to the polls, Lord, and voted, and as our uh, Lord, our duty as citizens of the of, uh, United States to do that, Father, and we thank you for those blessings that you've shared upon us this, this week with beautiful weather. Lord, we ask you to protect our soldiers, our men in uniform, Father, and, and ladies in uniform. ask you to bring them home safe and sound, Lord, and we ask you to bless their families, Lord. And we ask all this in a, your son's holy name. Amen. 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 Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Valentine. I want to open up, uh, just let everybody know in public comments, uh, if uh, anyone wishing to speak, please come up and sign in with the secretary, and you'll get three minutes. Do we have any... Uh, two-thirds agenda items that anyone would wish to bring up. Thank you. I'd like to entertain a motion to accept the minutes of the August 4th, 2008 meeting. So moved. Motion by Mr. Thompson. Second. Second by Todd Lambert. We'll move right into the drainage reports. Mr. Rue. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the commission. First, I'm going to uh, talk about the regular drainage, which, uh, you know, we mostly dealing with uh, the effects of Gustav and Ike, mostly Gustav, and debris removal. Right now, uh, I have a uh, listing, I think they should have handed it out to you, um, of the trees, and in fact, if not, we'll get it to you tomorrow, um, all the locations of of debris in our major drainage channels or ditches. And right now we're about 50% complete with the, uh, remo the, the removal of that debris. Um, at one time we thought we had about 80, now it's up to, to a, a couple hundred. Uh, as we remove, we find more. And we haven't really identified everything along three major channels. We're still investigating uh, New River, Con Bay Conway, and Panama Canal. And in fact, we're going to be uh, <coughs> reviewing that, those reaches with NRCS representatives for possible funding for the removal of some of that debris. And we're going to be trying to, to do that survey uh, later this week. And at that time, we'll be able to uh, uh, identify the exact locations through GIS, uh, GPS, and uh, we have a better understanding exactly what we have at, at, uh, throughout the parish. But again, we're about 55% uh, complete. Um, the NRCS funding is about 75, 25 match. Uh, they're going back now at non-emergency uh, removal of debris. The first time we talked to them, uh, President Martinez contacted us and, and talked to them and put us in, uh, with the NRCS. The only one site that uh, met the conditions of emergency uh, removal, and that was uh, near ETEL. They contracted that out, and we have it later on in the agenda to actually pay, uh, reimburse the parish government because it's actually contracted with parish government for the amount of the share for that. Uh, now, again, they're coming back with non-emergency items, and uh, we're doing a survey to determine exactly if we qualify and how much of that is, is a qualification. Also, in that, uh, if we are um, included in that funding, it's going to be a uh, reimbursable to us where... They'll contract, they'll tell, tell, tell us how much it's, uh, they will allow us, and we would do the work, and then we submit our invoices to them, and they reimburse us 75%. So we're, uh, again, working on that, 
and should have some more information by the next meeting. We also talking with and we have a meeting set up with uh, the governor's office of emergency preparedness on uh, with uh, the Corps of Engineers and uh, with the Coast Guard on some possible funding for some uh, emergency debris removal, mainly in the major uh, channels, the Amit River, uh, Manchac, and also going up some, some of our major channels uh, uh, into the parish itself. But we do have a meeting set for October 22nd uh, in Mandeville. And this has been sent out to the uh, to all members of the commission and the parish president. So anybody that wishes to uh, attend that meeting is welcome. But we will be there representing the, the district and seeing exactly what we qualify for on that. And some minor, uh, I say minor stuff, regular uh, drainage uh, items going on right now that might be of some interest to some council members. Uh, Ascension Trace has been a hot spot, and we are moving forward with the solution of that problem. <coughs> and we're also moving forward. We finally got uh, right of way. We finally got right of way on uh, landowners for LA uh, 73 at US 61. And that's the Dutton property and also um, the dentist office where we had a lot of flooding in that corner of the bank. Um, um, again, that's been a problem in the area. We finally got the right of way from Mr. Amos and Mr. Dutton, and I'd like to publicly thank Mr. Amos and Mr. Dutton for contributing some land for a new ditch to, uh, to solve that drainage <coughs> issue right now. They're working with us on it, and uh, we, we're probably going to be uh, moving on that project within a month, and that's a major problem that we've been having for a long time. For, for us, the, um, and going back to the, the Hurricane uh, Gustav, our major problem, of course, is debris. Uh, forest drainage and removing the debris. Uh, our people have been working around, uh, for the first few weeks, around the clock almost, trying to remove this debris. And uh, they're doing an outstanding job along with everybody parish government. It's been a, 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 a truly uh, uh, team effort on everybody. And it's just like all major uh, hurricanes and, and uh, events, uh, everybody comes together and it is uh, something that the people essentially can be proud of. On a major drainage, Burat Ditch, uh, we work in three locations along the Burat Ditch, 44 to Abbey James, um, between 44 and Abbey James, south of uh, Merritt Evans Road and also north of the second crossing Merritt Evans Road near that aeration pond. And we're hoping in the next four weeks we'll finish that project through there. Bay Francois and, and uh, Smith Bayou is south of Boudreaux Road uh, on that uh, stretch. And we should be crossing Boudreaux Road in the next two weeks on Smith Bayou. Bird Island Ditch, we're right in the middle, and again, we're going to be talking about it a little bit uh, more <coughs> tonight uh, when GSA is going to talk about their design and their, sub, uh, their report of that, uh, that channel and the improvements needed for the Roddy Road uh, crossing. But we are working on right-of-way and wetland delineation of that, uh, that ditch right now. And the shredder is back in service. And right now we're, doing, we're uh, shredding uh, along Ball Bayou for right of way uh, and uh, surveying. And so we can get to work on that uh, reach. And that comes from the report from GSA that they did for us and we, we received. Uh, we're doing our, the, the surveying for us, the cut sheets and the, the final uh, design of the project itself. In other drainage, uh, <laughs> Of course, we have some other, a few other drainage issues that's on the agenda. I won't go through them. We'll, we'll talk about it when we get to that point. Uh, Henderson Bayou. We have uh, a report. For, uh, really, the 30% design is due, and, and we're receiving it tomorrow on the Henderson Bayou floodgate. Uh, we have uh, the Clemson hydraulic modeling has been completed, and they, they, this, this is included in the uh, report that they're delivering tomorrow. And this is going to be delivered to the commissioners after we review it. The main thing with the uh, with that project now is the wetlands report and review and determination wetland determination, and that's in the pro process. And hopefully we'll have that something back from the Corps of Engineers uh, on that review by the end of October, end of this month. So we then can uh, make some decisions and proceed to the next step. Hopefully by the next meeting we'll have some enough information to do that. The Law Ridge levy, the existing levy, 
uh, is about 97% complete. And we're going to be moving probably at the next meeting to uh, going to, you know, presenting this uh, report uh, and the submittals on the design and getting an authorization to move to the next step, which is actually uh, construction. Um, and we're looking at trying to do some of it in-house and outsourcing some, but we're going to have that determination by the next meeting exactly how we're going to work that. The uh, Law Ridge Levy extension, again, that was kind of placed on hold. We are proceeding with the uh, geotechnical and uh, surveying and trying to get a center line of the design for a right-of-way <coughs> map so we can actually possibly uh, tie up some right of way through that area, but we're not going to proceed any further until we get more authorization from the commission and we have to sit and meet on that project. The um, for uh, Volkert, Volkert right now is roughly overall about 55% complete with the uh, Muddy, Muddy Creek, Creek uh, project and it's due for completion uh, by the end of January. And so far, they're on schedule to submit uh, that uh, preliminary design and engineering and recommendations of what actually should go there at the end of January. So we're in good shape with them. <coughs> BKI, uh, Henry Picard is here representing P uh, BKI. I'm going to ask him to come up and uh, give a report on the uh, pumping station for us to cover and the additional pumps for that project. November so we can go out to bids. The preliminary plans for the pump station extension uh, was due the end of September. Unfortunately we lost a couple of weeks due to Hurricane Gustav and Ike and uh, if we can we'd like a request of till the 20th of this month. At that point we'll turn in preliminary plans on that project. Any questions for Mr. Picard? Got any any questions on any of the updates? While Mr. Picard is up there, uh, we want to uh, we'd entertain a motion for an extension. Motion. motion by Mr. Thompson, second by Mr. Shakespeare. About two and a half weeks. And that would be what you said, Henry. The twentieth. We turn October it over 20. Yes, sir. 2008. Uh, before then, yes. 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 <coughs> yes. Um, Bill, you got any anything else on the pump station cover that? Uh, the cover is 100. If we have received the plans for the pump station uh, from. Uh, yeah, you want to comment on the, the Yes, we turned in the preliminary designs, and we've actually moved forward. Bill had had some additional funding um, on the to got to get us into finals, but not to complete finals. Uh, so we've actually gone into final plans. We've we completed preliminaries, turned those in. What uh, before the last meeting? Yeah. Well, the last meeting that didn't happen. But we turned that in uh, mid-August, I believe, and. We have gone into finals. We're in the process of detailing out that. Um, but there's, like I said, there's an amendment um, to get us the last $30,000 for our proposal. Um, and that it was an accounting issue. And then um, that should finish us up for finals. And we, our schedule is to have that complete for mid-November so we can go out to bids. So the next thing we ought to be able to be looking at the dollars, right, Bill? Yes, sir, and uh, we'll be coming back to you at the next meeting for actual authorization to um, to move forward to the final. Well, this is the final design, and once we get the final design in, we're going to review it, and then we're coming in to uh, authorization to advertise for bids. You know, so it's okay. you know it's right there. We, we're moving at uh, within reason uh, on on schedule. We're hoping to get to construction in the winter time or by spring, but and so we. We feel pretty good shape on, on this. Okay. Ultimate goal is to have everything complete before June of next year. That's it. Thank you, sir. Any questions for Ms. Picard? Thank you. 
Thank you, sir. Can yes. I have the first and second on the extension motion again, please? The first would be Mr. Thompson. Second would be Mr. Shakespeare. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any more updates? No, sir. That's uh, all of my report. Any questions for Mr. Roof? Yeah, Benny. Okay. We have a vote on the motion for an extension for BKI. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. We'll move on to item number six, trucker's agreement for the major uh, channel improvement program. Yes, sir. I came to you. Uh, a a couple of months ago, asked for permission to hire more truckers or at least bring more truckers into uh, dirt haulers into the system with task order contracts so we have access to more and with the ability to, uh, do, to haul more dirt from the spoil banks of uh, the channels. And you gave me that authorization. We're coming back tonight with uh, the actual people that qualified for this work, and I'd like to get an authorization. Uh, to authorize uh, authorization to, to offer task order contracts between East Central Dr Gravity Drainage District and also and Hallelujah Free Dirt Davidson Trucking Togo Trucking Big Dog Trucking Monte Goa Trucking BBS Trucking Renee's Trucking Special K Trucking and Jaybird Trucking for the hauling of small materials part of the major channel improvement program for the unit price of $65 per yard and not to exceed the amount of $50,000 per firm and to increase the budget item. 06 4046 for physical year 2008 by $200,000. So moved. Second. Who was the move? Mr. We have a motion uh, yes, sir. by Mr. Shake Snyder, second by Mr. Dempsey Lambert. Discussion? Mr. Thompson. Mr. Rue. Yes, sir. You got to go trucking. You left that one off. I beg your pardon? I have two go. Yeah. It's in there. Yes, yeah, when you read them out. If I if I did, it's in the in the written motion. So. It is there. Oh. Yes, yes, sir. It's in the written motion. To go we trucking. acknowledge to go trucking. Yes, sir. Okay. question, man. I got a question, uh, Mr. Rue. Uh, based on some of the trucking that we've done in the past, uh, you know, we'd uh, we'd hired in some trucking by the hour, uh, with a hundred percent cost. Uh, so Based on this versus that type of work, I'm just asking. This, well, we found the last time we, well, we, we've been doing this for $55 a yard. Right. We increased it to 65 based on, mostly because of the fuel costs, mm -hmm. the adjustment for the fuel costs. And it, it seems to work pretty well. Uh, if they have to sit there for an hour or so for whatever reason, uh, it don't cost us anything. Uh, this is per yard delivered, and we're tracking that uh, on okay. uh, delivery tickets. And uh, supervision monitoring what it, what's going on. So this is the best way of working it. We feel. Hey, wh what's your anticipation of how many of these you'll be using at one time? It's a very it's very possible that we may be using all of them at any point in time. Uh, but if any case, we're going to try to be equal with all of them. Uh, if we use uh, two, if we only need two or three because of weather conditions this week, and uh, it reverses next week, we can try to hire two, three, four different ones. So we equalize the number of loads per trucker. And that's our, our intent, keep it equal. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mr. Shakespeare. Bill, according to this, we're paying them $65 per yard? Yes, sir, per yard of dirt delivered. Now, we load them up, and then it's, and most of them have 12 yards. So trucks. just the haul? Just is, hauling. Is that's six. That's seven hundred something dollars a load. Yes, sir. Um, That's why I'm questioning, Mr. Rue. I think we got sixty-five dollars an hour flat I'm rate sorry. for the truck. You are oh. absolutely right. It's sixty-five dollars per hour. Okay, because it's sixty-five dollars. It was hour. fifty-five, and at some point we. Yep. There's a, and um, Madam Secretary, can you amend that yep. to show yeah. that? The motion no, no. is to no, authorize no, no. a task I'm, order to hire. Good thing you caught that. That's put all of these right. uh, on on uh, on task order for 
possibility of $65 per hour flat rate. That's truck and driver, driver, truck driver furnishes everything, insurance, that's fuel, right. and all. That's absolutely right. My apologies. That's why. Not to see two fifty five uh, fifty thousand dollars per farm. That's why I asked the question earlier. Yeah, I, I wish. Yeah, you're right. Okay. First mistake in uh, fifteen right. minutes. So it's you're a little rusty. We missed a meeting. <laughs> so am I. Any other any other discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. Any opposition? Motion passes. Madam Secretary, I'd like to acknowledge that uh, Mr. Bell came into the meeting about five minutes after. He's, he, I'm sorry I didn't announce him earlier. Uh, item number seven, to authorize the increase of the uh, 24 March 08 task order contract limits for Jaybird Trucking and Montegore Trucking. Mr. Rue, I understand this is a housekeeping item? This is, sir. The, uh, they went over their amount. We were in the, uh, changing over supervisory personnel at the time. And, of course, without authorization from the commission, we cannot pay for the, uh, the, the overage of these items. And we're asking for authorization to increase in limits. Task order DESH 0308 MULT2 to J. Burt Trucking and uh, MULT3 uh, Monte Goa Trucking from $30,000 to $34,000 each. And that would uh, take up the excess and allow finance to pay the invoices. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Valentine, second by Mr. Todd Lambert. Uh, any discussion? I got a quick question, Mr. Rue. Yes, how's the uh, it's uh, how's keeping up with the time, time sheets, and and within your management, that's working good. It's working a lot better now. Um, it, on this particular item here, um, we're mandating supervision keep separate records from the truckers, and then at the end of the pay period, when they submit invoices, they compare it, and um, and make sure that everything is is uh, is right to pay. Thank you, sir. Ms. Ms. Shakes, not a yet something. No. Again, at the time, we were uh, supervision changeover, and the supervisor that was uh, temporarily assigned to that uh, wasn't aware of the uh, his uh, his um, responsibility to collect and, and keep records of exactly uh, the hours when they were showing up and leaving and stuff like this. Um, so they had, he started this a week or two after he was given a temporary job to oversee that crew. And so he just didn't have the records and they submitted the stuff and they did not keep records themselves. This is, so it, it's a two fault, both people had a fault on both sides. They weren't keeping records to, to say they, they met their $30,000 and they should have stopped themselves. They kept going and they didn't tell us anything about it. And our people on the job wasn't was behind on keeping the records, so they had that little bit of uh, about a week or two that they did not keep the records, and they were behind on it too. I, I guess uh, we could prove we found some way to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that we owe them the extra. Well, we went back on the tickets themselves and mm -hmm. reviewed it and everything, and it was legitimate. Um, but again, it wasn't caught at the time to say stop. It was caught after that. Well, we have something in place now. To oh yes. yes. Okay. As long as we don't everything set up by supervision, we can make a mistake by, once, but not twice. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Motion passes. We'll move on to item number eight: uh, lighting at the weir at the yes. Meat River and Divergent Canal. Canal, excuse me. Yes, sir. This is coming as a recommendation from uh, the uh, Central Parish Waterways Commission. And it's basically to authorize the funding of Dust Dorn shore light and four solar powered navigational lights at entrances to the Amit River and Divergent Canal Weir Boat Way for the not to exceed cost of $2,000. And you fund the electrical usage annual fee to Demco <coughs> not to exceed $160 per year. 
So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Moved by Mr. Todd Lambert, second by Mr. Dennis Cullen. Any discussion? I'd just like to say this is a good thing. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? <coughs> Motion passes. Move on to item number nine. Uh, I think we've discussed this, but uh, let's go on, Mr. Rue. Yes, sir. Again, this is the uh, cover for Marvin Broke Pumping Station, and it took it through the uh, the preliminary engineering. They submitted $137,100 in their uh, estimate back uh, several months ago, but we knocked it down. We brought it down to $104,938 to take it only through preliminary engineering. Now they're ready to go to final engineering. We're asking for the uh, authorization to task order BKI engineer for final engineering, Marvin Bro pumping station cover, and set compensation of final engineering not to exceed $33,000, which makes the total project compensation $137,100 and to increase the annual task order limits by the same amount. We ask that as a resolution. So uh, moved. Moved by which one of you guys? Mr. Valentine? I second that. Second by Mr. Thompson. Any discussion? Mr. Rude, it's pretty good steadfast what it's gonna cost, huh? Yes, sir. That's that's no the final cost for the cover for engineering. Thank you, sir. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion passes. Move on to item number 10, survey of right-of-way access, Henderson Bayou Project, SJ, SJB Group. Yes, Bill. sir, and this is for the Henderson Bayou. This is on the west side of Henderson Bayou. It's an access road. We have done the survey uh, at a previous meeting, authorized them to do a survey of the uh, property survey of the land where it's going to be going through. This is actually a topo, a topo survey of the property for its elevation to make sure that Wherever the access road goes, it's, it's a, at a high enough elevation so we're not uh, prevented from getting to a pumping station in, in, in a major flood event. We all, uh, we're asking for authorization to task order uh, DSTP 0908 HNB 1 to SJB group for the topo uh, survey to establish west side address to, uh, access to the proposed Henderson Bayou pumping station for the compensation not to exceed 30000 $650 and increase the annual task order contract limits by the same amount. So moved, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion by Mr. Dempsey Lambert, second by Mr. Benny Johnson. Any discussion? What? I have a question. Yes, Mr. Shakes. Not Bill, what else is going to be needed on this? To You're going to have to have right away after this? No, sir. The, the right uh, after the property on. That's one reason we are okaying in the uh, survey of the property and also uh, okaying in the topo survey for the landowner to establish this right of way because he is donating the right of way to the parish. So we're coming out really ahead on this. We will have permanent servitude uh, to access to our pumping station, but we're doing the preliminary work up to establish this right of way. What exactly do you mean by? Topo survey here. Topo is what, the ele elevation. They're just looking for elevations. Elevation is where the proposed road is going to go, uh, and uh, and all the way. Actually, we, they're going to do it all the way to the pumping station. So how far is this? Oh, it's a long way. It's it's a good bit. It's a 160 acre track of land through there, and it's going through there. Um, so, I mean, just to get elevations, it's going to be $30,000? It's going to be $30,000 to do a topo survey. What they actually have to do is, is do the survey of the southern portion, pretty much the southern portion of that land to determine the, the, the highest elevation uh, within reason to take it from LA 933 all the way to the pumping station. And then that's going to be their route? That's going to be okay. the route. That we, they're gonna, right. they're gonna, that's what they're going to propose to the landowner once they establish this. And then we're working out with the landowner to actually grant us servitude of that uh, location. Okay, thanks. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? <laughs> Motion passes. Move on to item number 11, the debris removal contract discussion and cooperative endeavor agreement. 
authorization with the parish. Uh, what I'd like to do is uh, let everybody know that we have been working with the parish on, on an agreement to try to, uh, one of the main problems that we have is even with we getting the, the large trees and stuff out of the waterways is that we have to take care of them after we get them out. Bill, you've got any update on with Cedric on that? I'll tell you what, no, sir, but uh, we have that f up for discussion. Um, if, well, okay, that's, that's uh, yes, okay, I was thinking about number 12. Yeah. Number 11, no, we haven't. We talked a little bit, you and I and uh, Mr. Grant the other day about it, but I haven't received anything further. The, uh, the main thing is to uh, get with the parish and also the uh, the contractor and see how mm -hmm. we can figure out the compensation for the exact type of work that we're looking for All but right. we haven't had any discussion since we met last week okay I thought you might have had an update mr. president Randy you can either amend the current contract with the group we're working with or you can put it out for go through the bid process again so mm -hmm. I'd rather try uh, to amend it. yeah well, that's what we talked about the other day when we met for a short while is just trying to trying to piggyback and amend your current contract and uh and get on board so i can't say we are working with the uh parish government uh, especially ronnie fairchild and 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 uh and us are uh, working with the contractor and attempting to take as much of our debris from the site where we're taking it out of the bayou over near the road so we can get involved with their contract that they're working with right now. Once we get it to the road, they're able to pick it up under their existing contract. Um, but that's minimal amount of, of things that we can do that with because of a lot of our stuff is so far off the road, we just can't drag it that far. But we are doing some of that right now, working with the, under the parish contract, uh, existing contract. We'll try to, uh, we'll have to get together with Cedric and, on that. Yeah, yes, go sir. ahead. And, and the other thing, too, is we just about finished. We have, I would say, 95% of our sites uh, located for us uh, on GIS, on our mapping system, where the debris is. We're going through this survey with NRCS of uh, three major channels that's left, which is New River, Conway, and Panama. We get this information. We're going to put it onto our GIS uh, map, and that would give us a pretty exact um, uh, idea of uh, where debris is and we bring that to the table with the contractor to figure out the, the proper compensation to remove it. It'll give us, show it where it is and where, how far it is from access road and it'll give it a, a better idea to the consultant or to the, pro, uh, the, uh, the contractor uh, how can we uh, set compensation and Thank we should have that by early next week. Any other discussion on this? All right, we'll move to item number 12, the NRCS contract for debris removal. Yes, sir. An authorization this, for the cost share. Yes, sir, and this we touched on it a minute ago uh, through the, the um, drainage reports. Uh, this is the, the one area where we actually got permission from NRCS with, for participation to remove a tree, a uh, couple of trees. Did we vote on this? We didn't actually vote on the, uh, the thumb or the bucket. No, but uh, I make a motion that we authorize a drainage to purchase a digging bucket and thumb attachment. Well, it calls for twelve thousand. Excuse me. I think I th we had to revise. We had to okay. revise agenda. We had to revise the okay. agenda. Okay. The amended <coughs> agenda I was sent out Friday. Okay. The uh, uh, this item here, number twelve, is uh, actually to authorize the reimbursement to the parish of Ascension for the cost share of seventy-five percent federal, twenty-five percent local match between Ascension Parish and NRCS Department of Agriculture for debris removal. From Bayou Francois, detail maintenance building west of 44, total cost $7,200, local match $1,800. So moved. A motion by Second. Mr. Shake Snyder. Second by Mr. Thompson. Discussion? Yeah, Bill, I just quick, quick note for everybody to review. This is the, uh, 
as we have uh, talked with these folks, this is the only ones that we had that, uh, that were authorized on this, right? Yes, sir. The criteria they used based on uh, economic uh, uh, value of the property around it and impact to economic uh, uh, buildings and, and and uh, residential houses, this is the only thing qualified. That for emergency removal. Yeah. Now, what we're going to now is non-emergency, which is, is more lenient, and we have a better chance of getting more sites. I just want to clarify that for everybody because it looks like a couple of trees, you know, and mm -hmm. not a lot of help, but that's what they came up with. Yes, All in favor of the motion? Any opposition? Motion passes. All right, we go to item number 13, a uh, status update and discussion, uh, capital improvement bond insurance. Uh, uh, Mr. Dugas, Mr. Ryan, and what I'd like, what I've wanted this on the agenda for is just basically a, uh, uh, the way we've been in the world finance market and the United States finance market of the, the scenario of the sky has fallen, $700 billion bailout and all that. So you folks, please let us know where we stand. We got any issues on our bonding? Not on these Any bonds. liabilities? Not, not on these bonds, uh, Mr. Kluot. Uh, it's, it's very akin uh, to the mortgage that I have on my house, which was put in place years ago. Uh, the deal's done. The terms have been cut. Uh, the risks were taken by the people that purchased the paper, uh, and they live with those risks up or down. Um, it's a good time uh, for people to buy municipal bonds. It is a bad time for people trying to sell municipal bonds. Uh, there are, I know my firm has, I think, almost half a billion dollars in bonds uh, that we are holding right now. Uh, the bond market volume right now over the last three weeks has been about, and let me back up, when I say holding, I mean that we are not going to market with because the rates are too high or too onerous, uh, and that includes issuers for East Jeff Hospital, Lake Charles, Bossier. Uh, uh, right now, the bond market uh, volume that you see typically uh, is about 15 percent of normal. Uh, so it would not be a good time to be selling bonds. Uh, one of the interesting things that this is a great time to buy bonds. If you, if, and I don't mean to be joking, I'm dead serious. If any of you ever thought about going out and buying a $5,000 East Ascension Gravity Drainage bond, today's a good day to do it uh, because there are a tremendous number of people that need cash, and they are heavily, heavily discounting all of their assets, including bonds. I pulled up on Bloomberg today. Uh, these bonds in the last, since about September the 11th, have traded at about a 10 percent discount off of face value. Uh, so you can figure that for every uh, $5,000 bond, denominated bond, where the, the parish has said, here's $5,000 I owe you plus interest, uh, that bond is trading for about $4,500 face value. Uh, and, and that's pretty good, actually. I've heard stories of bonds being discounted as much as 20 percent face value uh, because, again, these big bond funds like Oppenheimer, Nuveen, Goldman, uh, Wells Fargo are desperate to keep cash on their balance sheet, uh, so they're not, they're not declared insolvent. So they are selling any assets they have, including this type of paper, at a discount. But as far as the impact of all of this on the amount that you have to pay or your liability or any risk associated with the parish, there is none. Uh, I would like to tip my hat to your esteemed bond attorney. Uh, during all this process, uh, and I won't go into the details, but uh, we used a surety bond and bond insurance uh, on the bonds, and uh, uh, there was typical language in the bonds that said if at any time the insurance provider or the surety provider was downgraded below a AAA, which at the time we issued the bonds, they were AAA, and now they're not. Uh, I think they're probably double A, maybe single A that you then had to find a new surety provider. Uh, and that was kind of the old way that things used to be done back when people used debt service reserve funds. Uh, as you all, a lot of y'all know, Malcolm, several years ago, decided, and we started looking at it, we started using surety bonds instead of debt service reserve funds. Uh, and 
we changed the language in those documents. Uh, and it, at the time, it was a minor change and a minor whatever. But it was a good thing that we did because uh, had we not and AMBAC been downgraded, uh, we would have had to go on out and, quote, find a AAA-rated security provider, which there are none left. All of the bond insurance companies, uh, FIDGIC, MBIA, AMBAC, uh, I'm sure I'm missing two or three others, are assured guarantee are now not AAA-rated anymore. Uh, so uh, the risk that those people took on your bonds when they bought them, they were AAA-rated paper because at that time those insurance companies were AAA-rated and now they're not. Uh, mm -hmm. But luckily, uh, your esteemed attorney uh, changed about three words in a document, and now we're not out in the market trying to find a, quote, triple-A-rated bond insurer to replace that surety. Uh, so and I'm, he didn't want me to pump him up, but that's the truth of the matter. I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, any other discussion? Anybody got any questions? George, you want to you wanna buy some bonds? No, no, no. <laughs> Hold on to my money right now. <laughs> if it's in a can in your backyard, it's all right. That's the place to have it right now. No, the chicken yard. Thank you. Thank you. The, Mr. Rue, you got any, anything? I mean, that's what I, I just basically want to put it out in front of everybody and get the guys in front of us that, uh, you know, you hear all kind of stuff and uh, that, that we were safe on the money we have invested in the future of this business. All right, we'll move on to item number 14, the authorize, authorization to purchase digging bucket and thumb for our excavator. <laughs> Mr. Rue. Yes, sir, we're asking authorization to purchase a, a digging bucket and a thumb attachment for a CAT 325 excavator. Calls not to exceed $12,000. Motion by Mr. Thompson, second by Mr. Shake Snyder. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. We're going to item number 15, the design of the stabilization and drain system, Muddy Creek at Manchac Harbor Subdivision, Platypus Earth Anchoring Systems. Mr. Rue? Yes, sir. We looked at uh, a lot of alternatives to uh, solutions to this problem. It's been lasting for over a year now. And one of the things we looked at and uh, sent to our um, Geotechnical engineer for review is what they, is a brand name called Platypus Anchoring System. It's the Platypus uh, Corporation, and it looks like the most economical uh, method of stabilizing that bank. And what we ask for authorization to contract with Platypus Earth Anchoring System for this is for design services for anchor and slope stabilization of Muddy Creek at Manshack Harbor Subdivision, not to exceed three thousand dollars. Do we so second? Moved by Mr. Shake Snyder, second by Mr. Dempsey Lambert. Discussion. Mr. Chairman. Yes. And Bill, this is just Lambert. this is just design. Is just design. Uh, what we're having them do, they have their own engineers in house, and they will look at the bank and uh, take geotechnical information, and design the number of anchoring systems that has to be drilled into the bank, and the frequency of them, how far apart they are, and give that design to us. We have the uh, uh, we have the ability to either uh, take the design, bid it out, or use the design and do the work in house. For this first venture of this type, we'll probably use the design to bid out the project uh, because it's such a big embankment and big problem. But we are looking at that system on a smaller scale to stabilize some of our channels that we are presently digging where we're having a slough off and erosion problems, uh, and we'll do that in-house. But it's, it looks like a pretty good system. It's economical, and it's, it's fairly easy to do. So we, we're looking at it from both aspects, you know, doing it ourselves at a later date. I got a question. That, uh, within this anchoring system, I don't know, I've seen several, so I can only imagine what it is. I hadn't seen the drawings on it. Um, do they have uh, – do we need an authorized agent? Uh, from from them, uh, like, do we have organizations that install that platypus design? They have they have uh, recommendation for us contractors that can do it, and okay. they will give us those, uh, and we can get bids from select bids from those people since it's a service. Uh, we're buying the material and anchoring systems, and we and we'll be contracting a service to come put it in, so we can request qualifications. Uh, from some people they submit to us, recommend to us, and look at the pricing that they submit. 
All right. Got one more question, uh, Mr. Yes, sir, Mr. Todd Lambert. Bill, this is the same location where we had some utility issues where they were too close to the canal. Exactly. Have that yes. been resolved? Because I, I thought that was maybe a utility issue or developer issue that was caused a lot of these erosion problems on this section there. All the information, that may be uh, contributing to the problem, but as per the geotechnical investigation uh, that we had done um, by Ottoman and Associates, it seems that a lot of the water has been coming from detention ponds in the area, especially one that's not too far from the, this location. Migrating under this is a fault that was there for many years before they built the subdivision is migrating through there. Part of this system is actually an anchoring system, but it's also a drain system where they put um, what they call a platted drain, which is a, it's a subsurface, uh, it's a, a leaching type system that goes in there and it actually leaches the water through the system so it and you know it goes outside of the um outside of the the embankment or the uh <coughs> the stabilization that they actually putting in place okay. so it's a combination of leaching system that, to get the water out of the subsurface and also anchoring the system at the same time thank you bill any other discussion All in favor? Aye. Uh, yeah. Any opposition? Motion passes. Move on to item number 16, authorization, authorization to purchase aluminum box covered Mirror Road project. Yes, sir. We're asking authorization to purchase aluminum box covered as per quotation DJ 091008 from Contact Construction Project for Mirror Road Bridge Replacement Project for a cost not to exceed 116000 Four hundred fifty-seven dollars and six cents. So moved, Mr. Chairman. I second. Mr. Benny Johnson got a motion. Mr. Todd Lambert second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion passes. We'll move on to item number seventeen: hydraulic analysis of Bird Allen Ditch. Uh, Mr. Rue, uh, we got Jake Lambert with GSA. Yes, sir. I'd like to call on Jake Lambert uh, with GSA to talk about and answer questions about the the design of the uh, improvements to Bird Island Ditch. Councilman and uh, Mr. Rue, uh, just to give you all a little bit of history of, of this uh, this project, uh, it was part of a supplement um, to the Roddy Road widening project that that uh, GSA had worked on uh, over the last couple of years. Um, the, the crossing of Shadow Creek and Bird Island Ditch uh, has, has overtopped uh, uh, during, during storm events uh, for quite a while, and this project was to investigate uh, the conditions that were causing that and then to uh, provide some, some options to to reduce the frequency with which the road was overtopped uh, during storm events, um, and what we've done, um, we have provided through our through our uh, hydraulic study of this ditch, uh, basically three options uh, uh, for the channel size that would provide varying levels of service for the for the roadway, basic uh, for Roddy Road. Um, right now, as I understand it. Um, uh, the, the issue with this project uh, or that construction of this project is going to come down to the economics of acquiring right of way and, uh, and, and drainage servitude uh, uh, to construct this, these improvements. Um, what we've done, uh, we've provided um, three different channel options, uh, sections basically, uh, that, that have a channel of, of increasing top width uh, bank for each for the channel sections. Uh, along Bird Island Ditch from Black Bayou uh, to the east uh, to Roddy Road and then also from Shadow Creek up to, to Roddy Road. Um, and it's my understanding right now that, that the drainage department internally is looking at each of these uh, channels with the, the varying top widths uh, and, the, and the additional servitude that's going to be required uh, to, to construct these improvements. and. Uh, Basically, I think the, the decision on which channel option we're going to go with is going to come down to the economics of that. 
Um, but we've provided in here the, the various channel options. My personal recommendation is uh, at least to go with the, the option two, which will widen the top bank of that channel by approximately 20 feet uh, on the main stretch. And then uh, the, from, from the intersection of Bird Island Ditch and Shadow Creek, uh, increase the top width of the ditch is approximately 15 feet. This will provide a, a, a approximately a 25-year level of service uh, for Roddy Road, and um, which basically means that the road during a 25-year storm event would be uh, passable to vehicular traffic. There may be some minor overtopping, but it would be at least passable. Um, we can we have a third option in there that that uh, would would basically uh, render Roddy Road passable during a 100-year storm event, but. Uh, my gut feeling is that it's going to create a, a, a the, the ditch itself would have to be so large that uh, number one economics wouldn't work out, and then number two uh, potentially you know you you may be having much larger problems during a hundred year storm event than than just one road over top in any way. So the economics may not be there, uh, but that's yet to be determined. Uh, other than that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that y'all have about any methodology or uh, any any specific questions that you may have concerning uh, residents in your area, um, any, anything that y'all may have. Any questions? Mr. Shakespeare. Is this uh, when, the, when the road is being constructed, is this going to be the results? Uh, yes, sir. Well, what we did, the, the, uh, the, the uh, channel improvements that are that are already designed for Roddy Road were incorporated into this model. Uh, okay. For say the the bridges that are existing right now uh, are going to be replaced with with large box culverts, and they are adequate for the uh, the proposed improvements. And then what we were tasked to do, which w w basically the the new box culverts can, are large enough to handle the upstream water, and we were tasked to look at the downstream components to improve the the flow to get the water through those box codes okay. and on in the black body. So in other words, once this, if we follow your recommendations, then when we do the road, improve the road, and we may raise the road, I think. The roads uh, are going to be raised uh, okay. basically a couple inches. It's, it's not going to affect the people that are in back of the road. Is what no, you sir. And we, uh, as a as a supplement to this report, uh, we've submitted to uh, to. I guess it was the DPW, uh, basically a justification or an explanation of of our <coughs> investigation on that. Uh, you know, we're going to raise the road about two inches, but the open area of the water uh, that would have overtopped the road, including the larger box culverts, is is adequate to handle and not create any adverse circumstances for any any uh, upstream uh, residents or structures. Okay. And then, in addition, any improvement that we make to the downstream end of these of these channels will greatly improve the the water surface profile further upstream. Bill, how, uh, when is this scheduled to be improved the lower area? Everything is depending right now, like Jake says, on the right of way requirements. To we're looking at all three alternatives, and and again, the the, the number three, the hundred year, is totally out of the question. But we're evaluating the uh, twenty five and the ten year. To determine the uh, problems we're going to have with the right of way, we're looking at right of way right now. We we putting uh, the the both one and two proposals onto an aerial map. We're surveying right now and and uh, and trying to place it so we can easily see what kind of encroachments that we may have problems with, and major encroachments uh, like buildings and houses and things like this. Uh, once we determine the major encroachments, we're then we're going to uh, look at and the, how many major encroachments. Then out of, you know, right there determine if we maybe need to knock it down to a 10-year event and try to plan for that or, 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 or keep going with a 25-year. Now, the, it's, like Jake said, the, the covers, theoretically th uh, speaking, if the covers at Roddy Road is large enough to, to take care of the present uh, bridge opening and the overtopping of a road, if it's big enough to handle that, as, you know, then theoretically, there should be no difference from any past event at the house upstream of or, or east of Roddy Road. <coughs> it's going to go through there, and the conditions of the ditch 
will, will be no different than what it is at, at any past event. However, we want to improve that, all of that ditch eventually to make it, because we have problems with it. So we want to go ahead and improve it at least to a 100% 10-year flood event. If possible, move it up to a 25-year event for future uh, development. Yeah, I would hope that we would, right. you know, since we're going through and doing that, it would be uh, more cost-effective if we do it right the first time. I mean, and not necessarily do it right, but err on the side of getting close to, to a 25-year event than a 10-year event. Exactly. And again, it, 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 the major determination is how many major structures is encroaching into that design, the 25-year design versus the 10-year design. And if, if I may, uh, it's, it's if you, if you look at the, the length of the channel, there are some structures on one side or the other, but, but at very few locations are there structures on both sides of the channel. So mm -hmm. with some channel realignment, and uh, it, it's very possible that, that we can, you know, get acquired a servitude and not have to buy, you know, any, any significant structures or anything like that. Okay. Just, just say. And again, we're going to try to work from the standpoint we've been working all our channel improvements, and that is to get participation by the landowners and do a quid pro quo in some way where we can, uh, you know, do some some things for them, like put dirt where they need it, you know, from the bay along their stretch, and uh, and not have to actually buy right of way. Uh, but if necessary on something like this, we will. Uh, if it's an encroachment. Uh, the structure that we can't get around with then we have to come back to the commission with authorization to purchase uh, selected pieces of the property mr. Johnson yeah uh, Jake and Bill appreciate the work y'all have done on this uh, we've had some issues with the gentleman right there on Roddy Road with that uh, and we've made sure that that hydraulic like you said there's all the water that would normally top the road is going to be able to flow through that through the culverts that we're putting there so we're increasing the size of that that uh, flow underneath the road tremendously yes sir uh, you did say my understanding I thought we had it uh, with the design of the road that it wasn't going to raise it that high uh, it's going to be raised two tenths of a foot you know, a couple inches but we're still going to be able to control it to where we don't have any impact upstream yes, of sir. Roddy Road. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, can you kind of explain the uh, outfall at Black Bayou where Bird Allen falls in there? Because I know it's it's kind of facing upstream. And are we taking any measures to kind of help that out? Uh, yes, sir. And uh, I believe Mr. Bill probably could, could speak a little more into that. I know uh, at one time the parish uh, had done a little bit of work out there. And... Um, and that's going to be almost, uh, it's, it's actually going to be um, more of an, of an alignment issue. Um, but what we've done, uh, the, the model that we've done is, is basically a steady state model. Uh, we don't take any of the, the, the momentum uh, equation, you know, we don't take any of the, of the momentum into the account uh, during this, these calculations. But... Uh, by realigning the channel to where it's facing downstream, obviously would would create a a, uh, a, a benefit to the to the channel. And also, um, you know, when we when we uh, ran our numbers on this thing, we went back and looked at the historical gauge data uh, at the 621 cross in the Black Bayou, and that's what we were using for our tailwater conditions. So, uh, you know, we, I feel very confident that, that uh, we, we pretty much covered our bases and, and all of those aspects. Yes, sir, and uh, Councilman, what we're looking at doing is a couple uh, of methods. Uh, one thing we're looking at is, is realigning the main channel somewhat, but also uh, excavating a, 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 uh, another part of, uh, say, another elevation of the channel for when you get a certain uh, height water event coming through it actually overtop the corner and go in another direction to help uh, evacuate the water around that corner so we're looking at different methods it, it normally it'll be a dry corner where the property owner can use it it, it, and it won't be actually a ditch but it'll be at such an elevation where when it overtops it'll take the water on around a lot more efficiently and that's what I wanted to bring out make sure that you know, we understood that we were going to do some additional measures at that end of the canal to where we were going to help out with the flow on that end. Right. And I believe there has been some discussions with that. Right. right. Yes, we have been in discussion with them and showing them some pre preliminary designs of, of what our uh, intentions are. 
Go ahead. Yeah, uh, Jake and maybe Mr. Bill on this. And I, I know we went in a drainage meeting, not a road meeting, but sure. you know our main reason for this project was for these two bridges. Sure. And this took place about two years ago, and we hadn't moved forward yet. Yes, sir. So with this study that we have in front of us, how quick can we get these bridges put in on that's very needed and a safety issue on Roddy Road? And I think that might have to be brought to transportation, but. You know, since we're talking about that's the reason sure. this study is taking place is because of the two bridges that was was supposed to be put in a year and a half ago during the summer, well, which didn't get placed. I would like, I, as, so I'm just, you know, yeah, since yeah, we have the study, I give me like, a timeline on when can we get the bridges I, put I in. I would like, our intentions are in drainage, is to make the improvements so that possibly uh, if the, the road improvements are ready to go by the summer, that we can have most of our improvements done before the summer. So possibly they can mobilize and get a lot of the work done during the, the school when school is out. So we're looking and at the next summer. Is, that's that's the time frame is what I was for looking for the for the road. And again, GSA could comment, Glenn. But our intention is to get our work done prior to the summer uh, of next year. Okay. Todd, just to add to what Jake's already at, already provided to you, and to address the issue of construction, the final plans for both of those structures have been submitted to the parish now for quite some time. The bridge improvements or the the, uh, the uh, structure improvements are not waiting on the improvements that are being proposed or y'all are discussing tonight. The issue with the two crossings, once again, is still right-of-way acquisition. Uh, I'm not sure what, we're not involved in the right-of-way acquisition. We don't know what the status <coughs> of the right-of-way acquisition, but I know that they have had some difficulties in working through the details with that. So. Okay. Uh, uh, I think someone suggested maybe at the transportation committee meeting that may be a good question to ask, you know, regarding the status of the right of way acquisition so that we've got some timeline as to when this might occur. So the right of ways are getting by transportation, not drainage. That's correct. Okay. The, the actually, the, the improvements, the, the structure improvements at both of those locations, plus the right of way acquisition for those structures, are being done by the parish and not the drainage board. Mm -hmm. I think that y'all have. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think that y'all do have some financial uh, share, cost sharing mm -hmm. that you're involved with public works on, mm -hmm. as far as the structures are concerned. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Mr. Dempsey. Land. Yeah, thank you. And again, Jake and Glenn, it's a very good job. But that's what we're trying to do, just with the uh, the item that we uh, approved here on Mill Road with the uh, aluminum box covered. <coughs> Uh, we have to work hand in hand with this to move the traffic on Roddy Road around so we can help with school. But, um, you know, I, I think it was a call share deal. I mean, and, and plus the homeowners, they wanted to see what this study was going to bring out. It looks pretty good so far. So this is taking a lot of the, the guesswork out. And, Mr. Rue, you had to add something? Yeah, what I can do, I can check with the road department tomorrow. And I think primarily we need to see about the right of way at the two crossings, uh, the bridge crossings. Uh, it, once we, I, I think that the parish secures that right of way, uh, well then, if nothing else, the construction of the crossings can begin at a scheduled time while they're working on right of way for the rest of that, that uh, road. But I can check with them and see if, uh, you know, where they stand at those two crossings because that's a critical path, I think. The Number I mean, one priority I mean, was at, at the school first, what we were right. shooting for. Mm -hmm. so. these, these channel improvements are, are essentially uh, independent of any of the, the road project, right. you know, the, 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 the bridge replacement and the road improvements itself. Yeah, one of the things ahead, that Johnson. we were, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the things that we were trying to work on with this is coordinate everything with the schools. Uh, timing in and out with, with uh, school being in, in, in uh, session, as well as, you know, uh, making sure that with the Mir Road and the two Roddy Road bridges right there, which was, it was a large inconvenience as well as a safety issue with the, br the buses and how far they had to travel. And all three of those, two of the three bridges were condemned at one point in time. And that's been, it's been one of the biggest things to try to work and get that stuff done in a timely fashion to get this stuff replaced and moving forward, uh, 
I've had several complaints from bus drivers at the bridges, and I know that's been something that's, that's been a sticking point is the right-of-way for that particular thing. But in working with the road project to get the bridges done in conjunction to where we don't put any water in anybody's houses has been a big concern uh, because any time you've ridden by through that area, when we've had a major rain area, that, that area between Mirror Road and Roddy Road is pretty much a lake on the east side of Roddy Road. And so it was, it was a major concern to me to make sure that we did the channel improvements downstream and worked it in conjunction with the road project to try to get all this done to where we didn't put any additional water uh, being held up anywhere and take the chance to put any water in anybody's houses. So that's that's what we're trying to work with this and make sure we get it done. But uh, timing is getting to be a, a factor or something. We need to try to move this project along as much as we can. And I would submit that, uh, of course, we, we approved the Mirror Road uh, purchase under covers, and that's, that's really – has been ordered. This is a formality purchase for us, uh, authorizing us to buy it. But uh, the schedule will probably be, in, in my recommendation, of course, is to do the Mirror Road as fast as we can. Then once we do Mirror Road, you actually, my recommendation is to mobilize in the summer to do actually both your crossings on Roddy Road at the same time. And because the, the Mirror Road is the access to that in-between part between the two crossings. So you have in access in and out, and it, it seems to me no reason not to contract both crossings at the same time and hopefully complete them both at the same time, and you can open that whole section up. Um, so that's, that would be my recommendation for us to schedule. Any other discussion on this? Uh, I, Hello, famous I, chairman. Yes, sir. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, Bill, Jake, on uh, most of it, is you looking for 22-foot bottoms or 22-foot 20, uh, um, top? Well, um, what, what you would probably be most concerned with would be the top width of the channel mm -hmm. itself. Uh, and if you look at the, the – there's some fold-out sheets. They have right. three, three different options. And the table on the top, <coughs> all the way on the left – on the right-hand side – at the top would give you the top width, and I have listed in that those charts the, the uh, existing top width of the, each of the stretches along the, the bayou, and then uh, then what we would be proposing. So uh, I think it's good to, to just so you would know, well, you know, from from Bur from Black Bayou to the intersection of Bird Island Ditch and Shadow Creek, we would be needing 10 or 20 additional feet, just depending on on which of the levels of uh, service you end up ultimately uh, constructing for. Okay. So, uh, one, uh, one last thing, uh, something, you know, just this is kind of minor, but they came up in this thing. Uh, that along uh, Bird Island Ditch uh, and also on Shadow Creek, there are several uh, cattle flap gates that, that people have constructed over the years uh, and probably unintentionally, uh, you know, they, they construct these things to keep their livestock within the fences, but uh, these cause pretty, can cause fairly significant uh, obstructions for the, for the flow, and also they're just traps for debris. Um, we had talked about uh, maybe looking uh, into developing a parish-wide, uh, you know, a, a standard, uh, you know, for some type of flap gate. I've done a little research and haven't found anything from the, uh, Soil Conservation Service and various other government entities, but uh, that might be something that somebody could look into at some point. That we would have a standard that if somebody wanted to build some type of structure to protect their their livestock, they could, uh, you know, we could hand them a, a, a standard drawing and say, yeah, this is what you need to build. Uh, and then lastly, you know, I'm sure y'all are aware of this, but but uh, we we really try to stress in here the importance of channel maintenance, debris removal from. Uh, obstructions, you know, you get you get these piles of logs and sticks and all. That's that's so critical for you for your channel. I mean, uh, I, I can tell you, you know, you you really reduce the water surface profile in these channels by by having adequate uh, grass uh, cutting and maintenance and channel channel maintenance. So, other than that, if you don't any other me. questions for GSA, any other comments? Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. We'll move on to item number 18, hazard mitigation grant, 1603 and 1607 action items. Ms. Carla Cormier. Good evening, gentlemen. On your agenda, we have four actual offer and close 
we'd like to get a motion to enter into some offers. Now, just keep in mind as a refresher, this is the HMGP grant. It is 100% reimbursable. And I know you're all looking at the number on the first one to authorize the motion for the 636 549 That is actually a commercial property that you're purchasing that's on the severe repetitive loss list. So moved, Mr. Chairman. We're going to vote on Moved Keep by Mr. Todd Lambert. Second. Second by, who was that over here? Mr. Shake Snyder. Discussion. Yeah, I just got a quick discussion, sure. Ms. Cormier. Yeah, yeah, the dollar figure does look high, and you know, it's it's not necessarily coming out of our pocket. So, uh, hmm. based on the dollar value, the total value, mm -hmm. we have a limit of value on our our grants in our area or within our submission. What uh, we had to do to be all able our dollars spent in the best direction. That's all I want to know. Yes, it is. We had to look at the cost benefit of each one of the homes and each one of the properties. And if you look at it, it's property number two in the application. It ranked higher than a lot of the others. And it is higher on your severe repetitive loss list. Okay. Over the last two years, actually, it's been it's had about $120,000 in damages. Do you have a location? Can't give you a location. Oh, I can't give location. Sorry. I can talk to you at a later time. Any discussion? All right, we have a motion on the floor. Um, I guess we take these all in one shot. Actually, I, I've got it's oh, better. you got to read them all? Okay. Yes, sir. That's good. Then on A, authorization to enter into offer and close of HMG 1603A property number two in the amount of Six hundred thirty-six thousand five hundred forty-nine dollars. Correct. We have a motion on the floor. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. We we'll go to item B. Authorization to enter into offer and close on HM GP 1603A property number five in the amount of one hundred and sixty-one thousand dollars. Motion by Mr. Thompson. Second. Second by Mr. Cullen. Any discussion? All in favor? Any opposition? Motion passes. We'll go to item number C, authorization to enter into offer and close on HMGP 1607A property number one in the amount of $152,000. So moved. A motion by Mr. Johnson, second by Dempsey, Mr. Dempsey Lambert. Any discussion? All in favor? Any opposition? Motion passes. Go to item number D, authorization to enter into offer and close on HMGP 1607A, property number two in the amount of $155,000. We have a motion by Mr. Thompson. Second. Second by Mr. Shake Snyder. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposition? <coughs> motion passes. We go to item E, authorization to bid elevation of HMGP 1607, elevation project number one. This project is has its plans all designed, it's ready to be bid out, and we'd like to have authorization to bid that project. So moved. Motion by Mr. Valentine, second by Mr. Bell. Any discussion? Any, op <coughs> any all in favor? Any opposition? Motion passes. Go item number F, authorization to bid for six demolitions all of the previous acquisitions that you've authorized to close on to actually accept those offer letters and close will have to demolish those properties once the homeowners move out they have 30 days from the closing table to move so we'd like to go ahead and also authorize the motion to bid that demolition so moved second. moved by mr johnson second by mr thompson any discussion? 
All in favor? No opposition? Motion passes. Are there any questions or any updates that you'd like to have? No, i probably got a lot of questions. It's just very brief. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Item number 19. Oh. Uh, We have item number 19 is the Bayou Conway watershed. It's one of the last major watersheds in the district that has not had a hydrolog hydrologic hydraulic study for model performed. This is the first step to establishing the extent of drainage improvements needed at the present and in the future for development. Lake Pontchartrain Levy District has indicated an interest in participating with the district in the funding of the analysis. What I'd like to do now is uh, entertain a, a motion authorizing formally request the assistance from the Lake Punch Train Levy District for the funding of the bon Bayou Conway Watershed well, Study and Project. Second. We have a motion by yes. Mr. Thompson and a second by Mr. Sheck Snyder. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion passes. We'll move right on to Motion item to number 20. Second. Motion to adjourn by Mr. Valentine <laughs> and second by Mr. Todd Lambert. Thank you.